but Tonga Ali, 400 milligrams a day taken in the morning will increase free testosterone. So you need ample calories, you need ample fats, and you need ample amino acids. Prepare to rewrite the narrative of your life as Huberman's audacious testosterone experiment peels back the layers of societal conditioning, revealing the raw potential that lies within and challenging you to embrace your true, authentic self. Men that get on hormone replacement will take things like an astrazole and they'll start crushing their um, estrogen and they run into serious side effects. Brace yourself for a paradigm shift as Huberman's daring experiment challenges the status quo, awakening a deep longing within us to harness the transformative power of testosterone. Testosterone has the, the effects we're all aware of, like deepening the voice, facial hair, muscle growth, recovery, etc. Mostly because testosterone increases protein synthesis. You look at a, a young male in puberty, it's a protein synthesis machine. Yeah. They eat, they eat, they eat, and they just grow and grow and grow, and they're putting on muscles and they're lean. And, and reminding us that within every individual lies the potential for greatness. Enter a realm where limitations are shattered, where doubt and complacency are left in the dust. As Huberman's audacious experiment lights the path towards self-discovery, pushing the boundaries of what it means to truly live. Oh, you know, starting at 30, your testosterone drops and you're going to feel miserable and you're going to recover more slowly. Everything that I've experienced is that over time, my blood panels have gotten better. My performance in athletic performance has gotten better. Hold on to your seat as Huberman's groundbreaking testosterone experiment unfolds, embarking on a relentless pursuit of self-mastery and uncharted territories of personal growth, offering a glimpse into a world where limits cease to exist. Why am I mentioning this? Well, first of all, I want to be very clear. I don't have any rela financial relationship to any companies that manufacture those things. Zero. Zilch. But, you know, and some people ask, well, how much should I take? Maybe the answer is zero. Maybe you shouldn't take it at all. I don't know. Mm. So it, if you're going to explore testosterone augmentation, I think those are decent places to start, but you do need to do your blood work. You need to monitor your liver enzymes. You need to think, you need to be smart about your health. In a world thirsting for true authenticity and unparalleled vitality, Huberman's audacious testosterone experiment emerges as a beacon of hope, offering a transformative path towards reclaiming one's power and redefining what it means to live life to its fullest. So you want to be uncomfortable in the cold. You want to be uncomfortable in the heat. This is why I'm not a big fan of infrared saunas because they only go up to about 160, 170 degrees. Infrared light and far red light of all kinds has been shown to be beneficial for wound healing, acne, skin, eyes. There are even guys now putting on their testicles because it can increase testosterone and sperm production. Um, so Tonga Ali can lower hormone binding globulin and free up some testosterone. And it is true that free testosterone ideally is in the whatever, 10 to 15 range or something. Typically this is gonna be nanograms per deciliter just for people out there. But dihydrotestosterone, DHT, is the most dominant androgen in humans. If you went on a low fat diet, subcaloric low fat diet is, you know, it's a form of nutritional castration basically, yep. right? Uh, and some people require more fat than others, but that is absolutely to the reproductive system. And if you increase your fat, in particular saturated fats, I, the vegan community is pretty angry with me right now because I said, <laughs> sin of all sins, I said that I, I eat butter. I like grass-fed butter. Not I don't eat chunks of it, I eat a little bit of it. And there's a video on the internet saying, you know, he's bad advice. I, my blood lipids are great, thank you. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes I put it on a vegetable. Um, but, but, you know, I never said to consume butter in large amounts, but if you, dietary cholesterol is, is vital for hormone production. Mm -hmm. And for me, butter, red meat from good sources is wonderful. Uh, other people, they don't want to ingest those and eggs are really good. So I, I added more running and was able to recover, which is, that's what I think led to the improvement in HDL. So this is an interesting twist, and I think it's an important one perhaps to mention, which is that yes, TRT can cause some issues with lipid profiles, but if it allows you to do more of the health promoting things that yeah. are gonna support your lipid profiles, that can actually feed back to a better situation overall. And that's what happened to me. Likewise, the loss of any appetite for sugar or, or bad foods or processed foods, complete zero appetite for them. So overall, everything improves. What it will do is is increase some of the 
it will mildly increase some of the parameters that we've talked about related to testosterone. Willingness to pr in, uh, effort for one. Some people get big libido increases. Some people, they're more subtle. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a subtle increase of 100 to 200 points, right? Yeah. And some, there are the extreme cases of 400 or 500, but I've seen, you know, and someone wrote to me and said, I, my testosterone only went up 50 points or something. Okay, you know, first of all, the sourcing is gonna be key. There's a lot of garbage out there. There's a big problem with the supplement industry. And we could, this is also relevant to our, where we're probably going, which is things like TRT, the quality control provided from a, a doctor in a clinic is quite hot, quite high compared to the supplement industry. I can mention um, names of for Tonga Ali and Fidogia, the, the only ones that I'm aware of that are what they say they are, although there may be other companies too, is Solare makes the Tonga Ali and Barlow's Herbal Elixirs makes the Fidogia. Yeah, people are big on fish and omega-3s, but some amount of saturated fat is good. If you put your saturated fat to zero, your testosterone will drop. Mm. There's no question about it. And uh, and I'd be happy to share my blood lipid profiles and show I've done the experiment. So you need ample calories, you need ample fats, and you need ample amino acids. And then there's the supplementation room. And then it really starts going to, okay, like zinc, do you need? Yes, okay, fine, sufficient zinc. Do you need to supplement zinc? Eh. Maybe, probably not. Magnesium is important for these pathways, but it's indirect. The two things that at least in my observation and in my hands and in the helping some people with this over, over the years that have made a big difference, and again, this is different for everybody, but have been these two compounds, Tonga Ali, which is Indonesian ginseng, reduces hormone binding globulin. Hormone binding globulin and albumin are what bind the testosterone molecule and deliver it to your different tissues. Now, sex hormone binding globulin has been demonized. People are like, SHBG is bad because you free T is what counts. True, but it, sex hormone binding globulin is also time release on your testosterone. Mm -hmm. You don't want a ton of testosterone then it plummeting either. So having some sex hormone binding globulin around is good. In fact, low SHBG levels are what women see in polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's great to see that people are sharing their experiences with different uh, health tools, good good and bad. You know, when, uh, again, you know, like 5% of people or so will experience some serious gastric distress with magnesium of any kind. Well, mm. those people shouldn't take magnesium. The other 95%, it's up to them. So yeah. I, I would say that the best dosage for, for some people is zero milligrams yeah. uh, of anything. And yeah. uh, zero is a valid number to take um, yeah. for some people. That's, yeah. that's important too. So Tonga Ali can lower hormone binding globulin and free up some testosterone. And it is true that free testosterone ideally is in the whatever, 10 to 15 range or something. Typically this is gonna be a nanograms per deciliter just for people out there. But dihydrotestosterone, DHT, is the most dominant androgen in humans. And we'll get back to that. So, but Tonga Ali, 400 milligrams a day, taken in the morning will increase free testosterone. I know that people, there's some folks out there. Uh, again, you have to check with your doctor if this is right for you, but there's some folks out there that said, I didn't see the full 200 point increase that you referred to. Okay, well, let's talk about that in a second. I've seen people get 400, 500 nanogram per deciliter increases, but they Ooh. started off low, okay? And then Fidogia agrestis, 600 milligrams. I've seen people recommend a lot more. I don't think that's a good idea. Fidogia tends to increase luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone is the signal for the, the testes to make more testosterone. It actually, Fidogia in many people will actually increase testes size. It's a tangible uh, increase in testes size. Um, now, there are some reports out there about toxicity of Fidogia. Mm -hmm. Those were rat studies. They may have merits. I do think everyone should get their blood work done and they should be for and after trying any of these kinds of things. And I think that people should be careful to get their liver enzymes included in those profiles. Okay, so again, not 400 milligrams of Tonga Ali, 600 milligrams of Fidogia will work to increase testosterone by way of luteinizing hormone and freeing up testosterone. 